The next type of chromatography is the affinity chromatography. The principle of affinity chromatography is based on the property of specific and non-covalent binding of proteins to the other molecules referred to as substrates or cofactors or ligands. The technique involves the use of ligands covalently attached to an inert and porous matrix in a column. The immobilized ligands act as molecular hooks to selectively pick up the desired protein while the remaining proteins pass through the column. The desired protein captured by the ligands can be eluted by using free ligand molecules. Alternatively, non-specific elution with some reagents that can break protein-ligand interactions includes changing the pH using dilute acetic acid or ammonium hydroxide which results from a change in the state of ionization of groups in the ligands and or the macromolecules that are critical to ligand macromolecule binding. Thus, by changing the pH, the interaction between the target analyte and the immobilized ligand molecule can break. This breakage can also be achieved by changing the ionic strength, not necessarily associated with change in pH. One molar sodium chloride is frequently used for this purpose. Now, let us see the different types of affinity chromatography based on the types of ligands used. The chromatography can use monospecific ligands which are specific for a single substance example antigen for antibody or hormone receptor or we can use group specific ligands which are specific for a group of structurally or functionally similar substances like lectins for glycoproteins, protein G for IgG antibodies and dye stuffs for enzymes. Now, depending upon the types of ligand used, there are many variants of affinity chromatography, which includes immunoaffinity chromatography. The use of antibodies as the immobilized ligand has been exploited in the isolation and purification of a range of proteins, including membrane proteins of viral origin. Another type is metal chelate chromatography or immobilized metal affinity chromatography. This is a special form of affinity chromatography in which an immobilized metal ion such as copper, zinc, mercury or cadmium or a transition metal ion such as cobalt, nickel or manganese is used to bind proteins selectively by reaction with imidazole groups of histidine residues, thiol groups in cysteine residues and indole groups in tryptophan residues sterically available on the surface of the proteins. The immobilization of the protein involves the formation of a coordinate bond that must be sufficiently stable to allow protein attachment and retention during the elution of non-binding contaminating material. The subsequent release of the protein can be achieved either by simply lowering the pH or by the use of complexing agents such as EDTA. Another variant is dye ligand chromatography. Here are a number of triazine dyes that contain both conjugated rings and ionic groups fortunately have the ability to bind to some proteins. The term pseudo ligands has therefore been used to describe the dyes. And now covalent chromatography. This form of chromatography has been developed specifically to separate thiol containing proteins by exploiting their interaction with an immobilized ligand containing a disulfide group. Now let us see the working of affinity chromatography in some detail. A complex mixture is added in the column packed with the immobilized ligand which is covalently attached to matrix via spacer arm as you can see in the diagram. As you can see in the diagram the matrix has a spacer arm to which an immobilized ligand is attached. All these three things that is matrix, spacer arm and the immobilized ligand represent a single particle of the stationary phase. Now when the sample is loaded onto the column, the desired compound in the complex mixture binds to the ligand. Whereas all other unbound compounds are washed away from the column by elution using mobile phase. As we can see in the diagram that the sample mixture contains four different types of components out of which only our blue color target enzyme binds to the immobilized ligand whereas all the other components are washed out of the column. Now the bound compound can now be recovered from the column by any of the two methods. First is specific elution with free ligand. A solution containing competing ligand is added into the column in order to displace and elute the bound target specifically. Or secondly, a non-specific elution by change in pH or ionic concentration can be carried out. 
This weakens the interaction between the ligand and the target molecule by changing its conformation. This leads to elution of target compound from the column. On restoring the optimal pH or salt concentration, the molecule restores its original conformation. Now let us learn more about the matrix used for the affinity chromatography. An ideal matrix for affinity chromatography must have the following characteristics. First, it should possess suitable and sufficient chemical groups to which the ligand may be covalently coupled and be stable under the conditions of the attachment. It should be stable during binding of the macromolecule and its subsequent elution. It should interact only weakly with other macromolecules to minimize non-specific adsorption. It should exhibit good flow properties. In practice, particles that are uniform, spherical and rigid are used for the matrix. The most common ones are the cross-linked dextrins and agarose, polyacrylamide, polymethacrylate, polystyrene, cellulose and porous glass and silica. Ligand The chemical nature of a ligand is dictated by the biological specificity of the compound to be purified. In practice, it is sometimes possible to select a ligand that displays absolutely specificity in that it will bind exclusively to one particular compound. More commonly, it is possible to select a ligand that displays group selectivity in that it will bind to a closely related group of compounds that possess a similar inbuilt chemical specificity. The table shows examples of the ligands used and the compounds for which they have the affinity. For example, 5-adenosine monophosphate has an affinity for NAD plus dependent dehydrogenase and some kinases. 2,5-adenosine diphosphate has affinity for NADP plus dependent dehydrogenase. Calmodulin has affinity for calmodulin binding enzymes. Evidin have affinity for biotin containing enzymes. Fatty acids have affinity for fatty acid binding proteins. Heparin has affinity for lipoproteins, lipases, coagulation factors, DNA polymerase, steroid receptor proteins, growth factors and serine protease inhibitors. And protein A and G have affinity for immunoglobins. Spacer arm. To prevent the attachment of the ligand to the matrix interfering with its ability to bind the macromolecule, it is generally advantageous to interpose a spacer arm between the ligand and the matrix. The optimum length of the spacer arm is 6 to 10 carbon atoms or their equivalent. In some cases, the chemical nature of the spacer is critical to the success of separation. Some spacers are purely hydrophobic, most commonly consisting of methylene groups. Others are hydrophilic, possessing carbonyl or imido groups. Spacers are most important for all immobilized ligands, but generally are not necessary for macromolecular ligands. Now coming to the applications of affinity chromatography, many enzymes and other proteins including receptor proteins and immunoglobins have been purified by affinity chromatography. The application of the technique is limited only by the availability of immobilized ligands. The principles have been extended to nucleic acids and have made a considerable contribution to developments in molecular biology. Messenger RNA, for example, is routinely isolated by selectively hybridization on polyuciferose 4B by exploiting its polyl tail. Immobilized single-stranded DNA can be used to isolate complementary RNA and DNA. Whilst this separation can be achieved on columns, it is usually performed using single-stranded DNA immobilized on nitrocellulose filters. Immobilized nucleotides are useful for the isolation of proteins involved in nucleic acid metabolism. The technique was originally developed for purification of enzymes, but it has since been extended to nucleotides, nucleic acids, immunoglobins, membrane receptors and even to whole cells and cell fragments. Now let us see the advantages and limitations of affinity chromatography. Advantages include that it does not rely on differences in the physical properties of the analytes. Instead, it exploits the unique property of extremely specific biological interactions to achieve separation and purification. As a consequence, affinity chromatography is theoretically capable of giving absolute purification even from complex mixtures in a single process. Limitations include that this method requires a detailed preliminary knowledge of the structure 
and biological specificity of the compound to be purified so that the separation conditions that are most likely to be successful may be carefully planned. In the case of an enzyme, the ligand may be the substrate, a competitive reversible inhibitor or an allosteric modifier. The conditions chosen would normally be those that are optimal for enzyme ligand binding.